going to the ancillary measures for some 286 says that electricity and galvanism are uh, less experimented they are not known very well they are tested very little but they are not less homeopathic dr samuel hanneman says they can be used in a homeopathic manner if you know more about them because they act powerfully on the life principle they are useful in palliation to a great damage that in cases of diseases where there is already a great damage it can be used for palliation and we can make it used homeopathically but we need to know more about it it should be experimented and tested for some 27 speaks about mineral magnetism where north and south pole of magnet as described in metro medica pura can be used the dose is like Time of contact with the pole based on indications that if north pole is indicated the exposure to north pole should be more an antidote this is one important question which can be asked a plate of polished zinc will help as antidote so how to antidote the effects of mineral magnetism it is with a plate of polished zinc for some 288 and 289 explains about animal magnetism or mesmerism founder was mesmer and these sentences are important a marvelous priceless gift of god to mankind what is it you might think it's about homeopathy but this answer is mesmerism a marvelous priceless gift of god to mankind philanthropic self-sacrificing performance the options there might be massage and other things you might think yeah self-sacrificing performance might be massage because it requires more energy no it's mesmerism both these are about mesmerism philanthropic self-sacrificing performance so the mesmerizing person can be of either sex who has good natured enthusiasm great kindness of disposition perfect bodily powers very moderate sexual desire this patient should not wear silk so all these points are given these aphorisms about the person who is going to do mesmerism he should have perfect bodily powers great kindness of disposition and very moderate sexual desire because if there is increased sexual desire energy can be used in producing semen and also this patient should not wear silk and i think that is easy to understand because we had experiments in school where uh, a fiber piece or your ruler would attract small pieces of paper if you rub it on your hair and a glass rod would attract small pieces of paper if it's rubbed on silk so patient should not wear silk because there will be some electrical changes this is affected by pass mesmerism is affected by pass and pass is of two types positive pass and negative pass positive pass is given in cases where vital force is deficient here and there so positive pass is like you're giving energy Suppose vital force is something similar to energy and the energy is less. It's deficient here and there and you are giving some vital force or energy to it. Examples are old ulcers, amaurosis or paralysis of single organs. So in case of paralysis, of course, there is lack of power. Energy is less or energy or vital force is less. So when it is deficient in such cases, positive pass is given so that it's given. A negative pass, it's also called soothing and ventilating. That is in cases of excess of vital force accumulated in individual parts. That when there is excess of vital force, it's accumulated here and there or in individual parts. We need to give a negative pass so that because it is in excess, when you give it negative, it is balanced. It comes to equilibrium. Examples are somnambulistic sleep, where energy is more that the person is walking in sleep. Suppression of catamania, restlessness, sleeplessness, bad effects of a too powerful positive pass. So if the positive pass is too powerful, you need to give an antidote to balance it. And even in sleeplessness, restlessness, you see energy is more. So vital force is accumulated. So these are indications of negative pass. So you need to know uh, when to give a positive pass and when to give a negative pass. This can be asked. Procedure is very rapid motion of the flare extended hand held parallel to and about an inch distant from the body, from the top of the head to tips of the toes. Aphorism 290 says about, and mesmerism is a very important aphorism. Uh, this thing can be asked mostly when ancillary measures are asked. 
mesmerism is the one which comes on question papers so these sentences are important also uh, the qualities of a person who should be doing mesmerism and types of pass when to give what type of pass all these things are important for some 290 it explains about massage done by a vigorous good natured person the recipient can be a chronic invalid who though cured still suffers from loss of flesh weakness of digestion lack of sleep due to slow convalescence so this these ancillary measures are measures which are done with treatment it's not something to replace homeopathy even with medicine or after uh, treatment during convalescence these things can be done so in case of a chronic invalid who finished his treatment he is in the stage of convalescence he might have weakness of digestion loss of flesh all that so in such cases massage can be given by a vigorous good natured person and the procedures muscles of limbs breast and back are separately pressed and moderately uh, sorry separately grasped and moderately pressed and needed so this is the procedure of massage what we learn now due to its mesmeric influence it should not be used in excess in hypersensitive patients so this is done to arouse the vitality of a person in convalescence. So it has a mesmeric influence too, because of which it should not be used in hypersensitive patients. Like you know, if a uh, too powerful positive pass is given, it's not good. We need to antidote it with a negative pass. So the energy is accumulated or vital force gets excess. So because of this mesmeric influence of massage, it should not be used, especially in hypersensitive patients in an X amount because anything in excess is not nice. So these things will definitely cause problem if it's excess. The last aphorism 291, it's about baths. They are partly palliative and partly homeopathic. It helps in restoring health from acute diseases and convalescence of cured chronic patients. The points to consider is the condition of the convalescent, temperature of the bath, duration and repetition. So what temperature should be given to what kind of patient uh, how long should it be how frequent should it be and what is the condition of the patient all these things must be considered before given a suitable bath lukewarm baths they are of temperature 25 to 27 degree ranking this r is an old unit like fahrenheit or celsius uh, a unit of temperature ranking so 25 to 27 degree r are lukewarm baths these are palliative if you give an apparent dead that is frozen or drowned or suffocated state so the person is already cold if you give lukewarm bath it's like antipathy it's palliative uh, in benumbed sensation of nerves if you need to get an immediate palliate, uh, palliative action this can be given and same lukewarm baths act homeopathic when it's given in hysteric spasms or infantile convulsions because in such cases temperature will be high so when you give a lukewarm bath it's like similar similar books because it's similar to the already existing condition in such cases it will act homeopathically the irritability is unevenly distributed and accumulated so this is how lukewarm baths can be employed in palliative and homeopathic manner. Then comes cold baths. 10 to 6 degree ranking. 10 to 6 degree R. These are the temperature of cold baths. This can be palliative when it's given to restore the tone of exhausted fiber. Instantaneous and later repeated immersions. Gradually lowering the temperature. So in case of exhausted fiber, we need to give a cold bath to give instantaneous result by gradually lowering the temperature. So that is palliative. It's homeopathic when you give it for deficiency of vital heat in persons cured of a chronic disease. That is the person doesn't have proper vital heat and if you give a cold bath, it's similar. So in the second reaction, it will produce more warmth. So deficiency of vital heat will be solved and this will act homeopathically. That's all about 291 aphorisms of organ of medicine.